All right, so we're back. 57 Ford Fairlane. We're gonna work on this some. Uh, as you saw, I got the model everything taken apart. I got the cylinder heads, everything off. I gotta send the new heads off to get redecked because they're new to this engine, but not new heads. So it's fine. So what we're gonna do is, I went to a swap meet and I picked up a manual rack and pinion for a 66 Mustang. So what that means is we're gonna make it work in this 57 Ford Fairlane. Cause I assume they, I don't know, I ain't seen a whole lot of stuff supporting it. But the gearbox that was in here, I'll insert a clip right here. That thing is trashed. Holy crap. This is for your horn, by the way. Dude, look at that gear. Look at that worm gear. You see that? That thing is trashed. Okay, now that you've seen that, uh, we're not using that. So we're also going to convert the steering column into a, I guess you can call it a standalone column. I'm really not sure how you would refer to it. It doesn't have a gearbox attached to it no more. So we'll do that, put a bearing at the end, all that stuff, make a column. We'll learn everything together. So let's start putting this in the fairlane. So like I was saying, I picked this up from a swap meet, Man Rack Opinion, Flaming River. It's for 66 Mustang. The way it works is it bolts in to like where your idle arm is and your gearbox would have been. Well, it's too narrow for the Fairlane. So what I'm doing, or I already did kinda, I put it in the metal brake and I bent it out a little bit where it has a step. See the, the step in it? That way it'll reach the frame, but I'm gonna weld it in because it still doesn't match up to bolt up and I really don't want it in there bolted. I want it in there welded. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fit it up to weld it. The only bad thing is I already know I did some measuring. The tie rods are gonna be at a kind of steep angle. Reason being is cause this engine and stuff doesn't weigh a lot. So the front end sits real high right now. So I'm gonna have to put some Z bar style tie rods or something in there, but I'll end up figuring it out, but it'll be okay. If not, I can do a uh, heim joint, some misalignments or uh, yeah, misalignment deal, like heim joint ends, I can do that. But we'll see how this goes. Let's get in the car. All right, let's crawl down in here. My gosh. So, like I said, we're gonna try to fit it to here. We're gonna try to get that top about halfway, about the halfway point, right there. And uh, we'll clamp it, tack it, Make sure it's centered, everything's good, and then we can clamp the sides and tack it. And really, I mean, that should be it. It really, it really shouldn't be bad. It's like I said that word. Shouldn't be bad. So we'll work on doing it. This thing's pretty heavy. Oh my lord. It's heavy. Okay. So. Well. Hmm. I wonder if I can go underneath like that. We might need to put the car in the air and take a look at this. We will assess the situation in a minute. So I feel like if I went that crap underneath, it's too low. I want to go there. Where I want to go. I want to go. So, with 
that's what we're going to do. So this is center. That's center. We come to this bad boy. Twenty-three and a half. So eleven and three quarter would be center of this. So it's quite the odd measurement number. There we go. Call it. So we got it tacked in. Got it tacked there, tacked there, tacked there. It actually hangs a little low, but it's no lower than the frame rail. See, so totally cool with that. Uh, it's not a big deal to me. So now the only issue I'm seeing is these are way too far out. And that one's way too far out. And it's pretty close to the jam nut. So. I'm going to have to turn these and see if that will even work. But it's not terrible. It's going to have some angle on it because there's no engine transmission in it right now. There's none of that stuff. So I'm going to try turning these in and get that. And then we might go ahead and just set the engine back in it and double check our clearances. I know I'm good, but just, I don't know. You just never know. So I need to be safe. So I'm going to do that. And then once we do that, we'll start working on the steering column and then maybe get it connected to it and weld this stuff out and get ready for some painting. It's exciting. Because once we get some painting and stuff done, it's game over. We're gonna get this thing running, we're gonna do some burnouts. So, let me get this adjusted. All right, so we got the column out of the car. Now, obviously there used to be a gearbox on the end of this so that's what kept kept everything centered and stationary so if you look i'm gonna i'm gonna retain the column shift so i only need to this point and then about inch and a half probably an inch will probably do it of shaft sticking out the end of this piece so i end up cutting that but i'm getting this together make sure everything's still good everything's still function make sure all this stuff's still good and then I'm gonna mark this, cut it, I'm gonna cut this tube, and what I'm gonna do for now, here's the old collar. It used to, uh, the gear, it went on the gearbox and then the tube slipped, slid over the top of it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna drive it in that way. It's just for now to keep it center and then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna mill it where I can insert a bearing or a brass bushing or something some kind of bushing or something in there it's fine it, it just keeps it center it's not actually what's right on there's actually a bearing on the end on this side so we'll be fine this just guides it it just keeps it center that's all it does it's how it used to be and that's how i'm gonna put it back basically so like i said i'm gonna cut this super thick uh 
drive it in there, keep it center, and then cut that. And what I'll do on the end, I'm gonna have to measure it, but I'm pretty sure I can shape that as a double D shaft to adapt to that and put it all back in there like stock, adapt to that rack pinion, we got steering. And then I'm gonna have to build a linkage and stuff for the, uh, the column shift. But for now, let's get it steering. Cause once I get it steering and stuff, then I can work on painting and painting. And then once it's painted and stuff, I can still work on that shifter or the adapter, whatever it is. So I'm gonna start cutting this up. Master with a sawzall. Y'all don't know this, but I built those headers with a sawzall. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know that, but whatever. We did an inch and a quarter. Make y'all happy and me happy. back in it cars in the air and verdict is we got plenty of room look at that plenty of room we're good to go so now i just need to get the uh i guess you can say the right u joints i need to get a double d shaft and stuff and make that and then i gotta get that brass collar and then i can finish that off and we have rack and pinion steering on the fair lane I mean, but, but I will admit, we might have rack pinion, it's still manual steering, but it's fine. So, yeah, one more thing off the list. Now I gotta get the engine out, get everything prepped, get it ready for paint. Paint's supposed to be here sometime next week. I made some changes, I didn't tell you. But, that's how it's gonna be. That's how the steering shaft's gonna come down I'll weld this in but i don't want to weld this permanently until i have the the new dd shaft and the new uh joint they do make a double coupler i think i'm gonna order that double coupler for that but what i ended up doing i came in here and you can see it better on the back i cut a section out of this and i moved it inboard that way it'll help with the alignment to the knuckles because they were off a little bit and the more I looked at it the more I was just like just fix it just just make it right so that's what I did so that actually helps with the angle of the steering shaft it helps it helps with a lot of stuff really actually so that's the plan actually that's not the plan that is what we're going with because it is done so that's gonna do it for today I got some other stuff I got to take care of, but we got steering in there. Well, kind of. Hopefully I can get that bronze bushing tomorrow or brass bushing, not bronze. And then uh, we'll finish up that steering column. See you tomorrow. All right, so we're back. So I went and got some stuff this morning. Worked out way better than I thought it would. So now the next thing is, now remember this collar or rides on the bearing and the steering shaft itself. Before, the way it would sit, it was it just rode on it. Now, it's actually kinda, kinda sit down on it. So what you gotta do, come in here, you can either throw a tack on it or behind it so that collar don't slip down. But before you do that, make sure you have the cover piece and everything on the top and you can set your height, pull it off. You can see where it normally sits on there. You can see like an old wear spot and then just tack behind it or tack it to it. Either way, it doesn't matter. Just so it doesn't, your column doesn't push down through it. So then the next thing is, came in here, I already marked it. I'm going to shave this down to accept the double D. Now, one thing you also gotta remember, 
you need a spline somewhere. Yes, you have your spline on your steering wheel, but you, I also have splines here. That way I can orient it, orientate the steering wheel straight. Because otherwise you do that, you could be locked somewhere you don't want to be with like a double D shaft. So you want splines somewhere. Somewhere in there you want splines. And luckily it's on the rack and pinion. More than likely it will be on your rack and pinion. So it's usually doable and then you have the splines on your steering wheel as long as your steering wheel doesn't have a master spline. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this shaved down to accept the double D shaft. All right, now that I got that shaved to accept the double D rod, so you can goes on there, you got your set screw here, one on the back, tight, ain't going nowhere. So once you have that done, focus on the column. All right, so then you make your way over to TSC and you buy one of these radio bearings. They're in the self-help section or whatever you want to call it. This one, three-quarter bore, inch and three-eighths OD. Now, when you come over here to this tube, take your bearing and you put it right there in the end, tap her in. Very simple. And then once it's tapped in, you can put a tack there, tack there, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to put a tack on the shaft to the inside of that. Just so it doesn't move. You can get away with like doing like a collar or a lock ring, slack like that. I don't care to do that. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to drive this in. And we're going to slide it over the steering shaft. And we'll go from there. Should have a column at that point. All right. So now that I have that bearing, pushed into the end. There's your column two, column shaft. Slide it on over. Make sure you have your wires and stuff in there too before you get all crazy. Can't see. Too short. There you go. So like I said, now that that's on there, everything spins good, everything feels good. I'm gonna throw a tack on the tube and tack on the shaft, because that's what I want to do. It's really not a good spot, but we'll be fine. Beautiful. And there we have it. Wires that hung up. Now, we got a steering column. So, what we'll do at this point, we'll take this piece off for the shifter, and we'll get it thrown in the car real quick and show you what it looks like. All right, so back in the car, you got a steering column. Obviously, it's not hooked up out there, but like I said, I gotta order some, uh, some couplers, some DD shaft, stuff like that, make my connection, and I mean, it's in there. Factory, everything works. So it goes in park, gotta pull it forward, drive, park, reverse, neutral somewhere in there. And then first, hammer down pedal. But yeah, so there you go. I did this little, I guess you can call it a conversion on the column itself for like, like $10 something like that well worth it but if you're a bigger fella i mean i i will admit i am small i don't need tilt so that's why this wasn't a big deal to me the wheel is big obviously but for me it's fine but if you need tilt and all that just go buy a column that's all i can tell you so there you go until next time